Good morning, and welcome to North Castle. We're glad that you've uh, joined us as we've uh, gathered for worship this morning, and uh, we pray that you'll be blessed by sharing with us uh, as we worship this day. For those who are watching on, uh, at home, we welcome you as well and are glad that you've joined us. And uh, you're going to be hearing about Vacation Bible School this morning as we um, get ready for the, the week of Vacation Bible School that's, that's starting very soon, um, actually tomorrow. And we're going to be beginning a new series on uh, looking at how we're geared up for life. What is it that prepares us for life and how are we ready for life? And uh, we'll be looking at, over the next several weeks, uh, the book of Ephesians. And so we'll be starting that this morning as we look at uh, the letter, Paul's letter to the Ephesians. And so uh, we're glad that you've joined us. Uh, again, if you're watching at home, we um, extend a word of welcome to you. And if you're newly watching from home, we invite you to uh, share uh, some contact information in the, uh, in the comment section, and we look forward to being able to greet you. At this time, let us use uh, these moments to prepare our hearts for worship as uh, we listen to the prelude. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for all the blessings that you pour into our lives. We thank you for your amazing grace that fills us, that welcomes us, that calls us back to you. 
So this morning as we worship, we celebrate that we are part of your family, that we are your children. We thank you for the ways in which you have blessed us, and we ask that as we um, share in this time of worship, that you would help us to be prepared to be blessings to others. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is My Tribute. Uh, it is uh, in the blue hymnal, but we're going to use the version in the gold hymnal, the hymns for the family of God. Uh, the words will be on the screen. Uh, this one's a little bit longer, so we're going to uh, just sing it through one time. Um, we'll invite you to stand as we sing together. 365 in the hymns for the family of God or the words on the screen. to uh, welcome someone that's near you, and uh, then we'll invite you to be seated. <clears throat> this is our time for hymn favorites, so I'm just going to come back and check the prayer list. So, if anybody has a hymn that they'd like to sing this morning, we're going to uh, do a couple favorites. I picked them last week because it was July 4th. Does anybody have a favorite? 431. 431 in the blue, uh, the Methodist hymn, okay. 431. Uh, so, 431 is...
So we're uh, focusing this, this week, uh, 431 is let there be peace on earth. Uh, Kelly, if you have the, the words for that now, um, okay. So uh, I think most of us know that, this one, but um, if you need the words, uh, we don't have them on the screen. So it's uh, let there be peace on earth, 431 in the blue hymnal. Uh, we're focusing this week on blessings. And so uh, we've talked about um, the uh, to God be the glory and how the blessings that we receive give God glory in the hymn that we just sang. And we're going to be focusing that a little bit on that a little bit more in the message this morning. Um, but peace on earth is certainly a blessing uh, when we when we see it, when we realize it and achieve it. And so uh, let's uh, sing together 431. <laughs> But Dara, she beat me to it. That's fine. Uh, 347. You're on the right side anyway. In the blue book. So 347 in the blue book is... Spirit Song. Okay, so uh, we just uh, finished a series on the Holy Spirit. So we'll sing about um, how the Holy Spirit fills us with God's presence uh, this morning. 347. This will be our last one for this morning, um, so we'll do both verses.
wonderful way to begin worship, inviting Jesus to fill us and to feed us as we gather uh, in his name. And so we look for the presence of the Spirit with us this morning. Let me uh, invite the children here who are here to join me for a brown bag time. I think we're going to just come up and have a seat here on the steps, and we'll invite you to face out that way. Um, and if you're watching at home, uh, gather around. We'll uh, be uh, sharing a few words with our children this morning. So they're going to want me to have this on, and you'll see why in just a minute. So how many of you um, have ever been kind of surprised when somebody sneezes? Like when you don't expect it and it's really loud. So um, I have in our house, we have in our house an example of um, different kinds of, two extremes of different kinds of sneezes. We have Marley, the cat, who, Marley, our cat, is very tiny. And when she sneezes, it's kind of like, tsh, tsh, just like that. And it's real kind of gentle and, and, and quiet. Gigi, the dog, on the other hand, when she sneezes, it's something like this. She, she sniffs something on the ground, and if it's like got dust or whatever it is that makes her sneeze, she'll go, <laughs> and then she'll go, she'll stop and look, and then she'll go, do it again like that and she like makes that noise and it's like like what are you doing i had an uncle one time who who used to sneeze really loudly and we would all jump because it would be very sudden and it'd be like oh you know it's kind of scares you but um so we have all different kinds of sneezes and of course we were just uh we're just coming through the the pandemic and we've had to wear face masks and and to kind of protect um our, our protect each other from germs and things like that um, but what do you say when somebody sneezes? Bless you, right? Or actually, we've kind of shortened that. So usually we just say bless you when somebody sneezes. It's kind of, it's kind of a quick, we just shorten it. But it's actually God bless you was the original um, saying. Does anybody know why we say God bless you when somebody sneezes? Have you ever thought about that? That they don't have a cold, maybe? Okay, so if you go way back, when Pope Gregory I was was the Pope, and so we're back in the days of the, the bubonic plague. Um, so the bubonic plague was kind of like um, a forerunner of the coronavirus. It was a, a virus that, that kind of, it, it, it killed a whole bunch of people, and they had no cure for it. And so we kind of understand what they were going through. And so um, Pope Gregory said that when somebody sneezes, we should say, people should say to them, God bless you, because, um, God's blessing would be that they didn't actually have the plague, that maybe it was just a sneeze because of an allergy or, or a cold or something like that. But um, if it was the plague, if it was going to be something that, that would make them very, very sick or might even possibly kill them, um, it was God's blessing so that hopefully that God would be with them and protect them from, from the germs. So that was how it all started. That's one theory. There's another theory that said that um, people used to think that uh, when you sneezed, um, your soul actually left your body for a second. Now, you know, we don't think that that happens today, but back, back in the early days when they really didn't understand science and all those things, they thought that a sneeze was actually somebody's soul leaving them. And so you would say, God bless you, in hopes that you know, their soul would get back in and, and that they would be okay. Um, that was the other reason. The third theory is that people used to think that when you sneezed, um, your heart stops. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, but they would say that, you know, if your heart stops when you sneeze, then that's when you're closest to death because your heart's not beating. Um, but, it, you know, if it does stop, it starts right up again. But God bless you, meaning that if, you know, you were that close to death, that, you know, God be with you and, and take care of you. Now, we've shortened it to bless you, and pretty much we don't think about why we say that, right? We just say bless you when somebody sneezes um, because it's a polite thing to do. So what I want to think about this morning um, when you say bless you to somebody, what does, does that actually do anything for them? Maybe, kind of. Might make them feel better, right? Um, so one of the things we're gonna be talking about this morning is, you know, how do we bless others? What does it mean to say bless you to someone? Or better yet, what does it mean to, to really bless somebody? 
So if we were going to try to bless somebody, say, um, let's see, Eldon. Eldon's sitting right there. And Eldon, we wanted to, to be a blessing to Eldon. What could we do? Any ideas? No? Pray for you. Okay, we could, we could go up to Eldon. Do you have anything that we, we could pray for you for? You know, do you have any prayer requests this morning? And we could then pray. And that would be a blessing to Eldon. Um, um, what else could we do? Maybe you could ask her if there was, like, if she, just ask her how she was doing today. Or um, do something kind for her. Maybe if she, if she dropped her hymnal or something, we could pick it up for her. So there are all kinds of things that we can do, little things like that. Um, just little acts of kindness. Um, in, in Bible school, we're going to be talking about how we can bring hygiene kits, hygiene items like um, tissues and, and toothbrushes and those kinds of things um, to, to be a blessing to people who are in need. So if we give food to somebody that's in need or we give hygiene items to somebody in need or just help somebody out, that's a blessing to them. And so while it's good to say bless you to somebody when they sneeze or um, you know, we don't, as I said, don't really think about it, it's even better if we can actually be a blessing to somebody. Um, and that's really what, what God calls us to do. We're going to hear it in Scripture in just a few moments when I read from Ephesians, where, where we're called, because God blesses us, because God has filled our life with so many good things, that we can share those with others and be a blessing. And so, while it's nice to say, bless you, when somebody sneezes, it's even so much better if we can actually be a blessing and uh, reach out and help someone um, to, to know God's love and God's presence. Let's have a word of prayer together. Gracious God, we thank you for things that we can look at and think about that we experience every day. And as we look at those things and think about those things, we can learn more about you. And so we ask that you would always help us to be a blessing to others, not just to say it, but to find ways that we can live, live what that means by being kind to others, by helping others whenever we can, by praying for others, by um, just being, being good friends and neighbors. We thank you that we can share your love in so many easy ways and simple ways. And so we ask that you always help us to do that. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, thanks for listening this morning. Thanks for your help. So this morning, as we uh, prepare to ask God to bless the gifts that uh, we are, have offered, uh, we want to just remind you that um, the Bible School Mission Project this week is coming up. We received the communion offering last week for uh, children who suffer with, with hair loss uh, due to health reasons and also the hygiene kits to supplement uh, those. So just a reminder that we are collecting hygiene items. Um, the mission team is gonna be working on those next week. Um, and putting them together, but you can bring in hygiene supplies. Uh, the list has been in the bulletin. Um, it's still in the bulletin. And there is a, uh, a receptacle there in the narthex, and you can place, <clears throat> excuse me, those items in uh, that, that, and we'll be putting those together for um, the Mantua school system. This will benefit um, both all Seoul School, uh, Center City School, and JMT uh, through the nurses. And so uh, this is a way that we can reach out and help and be a blessing. Uh, to some local local children who are in need. And so we invite you to be a part of that. Let's take a moment to ask God to bless all of these uh, gifts that have been received. Gracious God, we thank you for, again, your love and your presence with us. We thank you for all the ways in which you bless our lives. So many things that we take for granted, things that we, we have every day that, that others don't. And so we pray that as we offer these gifts, monetary gifts, gifts of hygiene items, uh, food pantry gifts, whatever it is that have, have been offered to your service. We ask that you would use them to be a blessing to others through our giving. May we be your people who share the good news of your son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. This morning, for our time of special music, uh, we have uh, some in-person special music this morning. And I asked Carissa if it was going to be uh, who it was going to be, and she said, just me and the boys. And I said, well, is Jeff 
you know, included in that. She said, no, no, just, just the, the other three. And so we're happy to have Carissa, Harry, Charlie, and Matthias this morning uh, to come and they'll be sharing with, our with us at a time of special music.
Yeah, but I'm grateful again for grateful again for grateful again for
the event that happened in the book will be uh, a year and a more than a year ago, the eighth of December. And so uh, we're uh, deciding to not do a formal Odyssey uh, teacher and helper dedication, but we're going to include that in our inter intercessory prayer time. So I'm going to update the prayer list, and then I'm going to ask that um, well, those who are going to be involved with Vacation Bible School to, to please stand, and, and then we'll offer a prayer of um, uh, intercession as well as blessing on, on those who will be helping Bible school. So um, for our prayer list this morning, I have some updates that came. There was nothing in the prayer book. That's why I ran back there to make sure that I that there was nothing in there. Um, and uh, But these are ones that have come in through the week. First of all, we want to pray for the family of Chloe Sharp. Um, you remember Chloe Sharp is the, the young lady that we were praying for who had been um, dealing with cancer and then difficulty with um, with uh, her esophagus um, because of the treatment and everything. Uh, she was scheduled to go home last weekend and uh, ended up, uh, because of the feeding tubes and things she has, one of those had gotten, had gotten clogged. And so they had to do surgery to, to try to fix that. Um, but she lost too much blood. And unfortunately, uh, Chloe did not survive the surgery. And so um, we want to remember her family. A uh, very difficult time uh, after you know, signs of hope and, and progress, but then numerous setbacks and uh, just too much uh, for her. And so we want to lift up, um, you know, prayers for, for Chloe's family. Um, also uh, for the Little family, continued prayers for Courtney and her family. Uh, they still need a rental property um, and uh, they're getting desperate because time is, is ticking on. And uh, as you know, real estate markets and Rental properties are not necessarily, uh, it's not an easy time to deal with all that. And so please keep the Courtney, uh, the, I'm sorry, the Little family in, in your prayers. Um, also, we want to continue to keep in our prayers the Jameson family. Uh, many of you know, but uh, for those who may not know, uh, Betty Jameson uh, passed away last Monday morning. And so uh, her service was yesterday. Uh, we celebrated her life, but continued prayers for uh, all of her family uh, for her comfort and healing. Also, uh, Carl uh, Dickel asked for prayers for the family of Mona Cologne. Uh, this is Karen's sister-in-law. Um, uh, Mona's mother, Velma, uh, went home to be with the Lord on Wednesday, and so prayers for comfort and healing uh, for the Cologne and Dickel families. Um, so now, um, for Vacation Bible School, if you're going to be a, a helper or um, so I think some part of Vacation Bible School, we just invite you to stand. And we're going to offer a, a prayer. Um, we'll start with v Vacation Bible School. And so for those who are sitting near uh, someone who's standing, um, well, actually, all of you can do this, but just kind of extend your hands out towards uh, those who are standing, um, that they're near you, and we'll offer a prayer. Um, We'll kind of conclude the Vacation Bible School part of the prayer, and then we'll invite you, you guys can then be seated, then we'll finish the intercessory prayer for uh, some of the other needs. So let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this upcoming week of Vacation Bible School and for all that it means uh, to our church to be able to offer it um, as we have been through this past year and a half. So we ask for your blessing on what we on the unknown. We don't know what this week will bring, but we just pray for your presence, your guidance, your safety, and your wisdom as we um, share in a time of learning and fun together. We ask that you would bless all those who will be uh, taking part in Vacation Bible School, those who will be leading and helping and, and teaching and sharing. And so we ask that you would bless them and fill them with your presence and your wisdom. We thank you for each person who has offered time to, um, time to be in ministry this week. And so we just, again, ask that you would continue to, to bless all of our ministry efforts, but particularly Vacation Bible School this week. And we thank you for these things in your name. We also pray this morning, O oh God, for these other needs that have been lifted up, for uh, not only the ministries of our church, but for the families of our church, the extended family of our church. And so we ask that you would be with all those who, um, particularly this week, have lost loved ones the Sharp family, the Jameson family, the Cologne family. We ask that you would surround them with your comfort and with your strength. Help us to be signs and instruments of your presence through our care and through our 
reaching out and through our, our sharing with them. We thank you for the gift of your spirit that we know holds them close to you. We pray too for the little family struggling with uh, need for residence. We pray that, um, that doors would open that they would be able to find a place to live as they've lost their, their home, their rental home. We ask that you would, um, just through help of those who, who are available to them, um, help them to find a place. We continue to pray too, oh God, for unspoken needs, for those needs that even sometimes we weren't aware of, but yet you know our deepest needs. And so we ask that you would tend to all of them for folks who have been on our prayer list um, through the weeks, we continue to pray for them and ask that you would um, heal them and offer to them what is needed, that they would know your blessing in their lives. We pray too, as we uh, move from Vacation Bible School to a week of mission, that you would bless us as we prepare for that week as well. And again, as we share with uh, the community our items that are, that are being gathered. And we thank you that we can, again, uh, take some time to think of your blessings to us and share them with others. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So we're bringing back uh, this week our hymn of preparation. We haven't yet passed the offering plate, but uh, we're going to invite you to stand as we sing um, our hymn of preparation this morning. It's number 365 in the blue hymnal uh, this time, and it's uh, grace greater than our sin. We're going to stand and use verses 1 and 2. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 through 14. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. 
He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasures of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the Beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained an, inher an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we who were the first to set our hope on Christ might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of an this is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people to the praise of his glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So this morning as we, we begin our series on uh, Geared Up for Life, um, let me take a moment to just briefly introduce this letter uh, to the Ephesians. That was uh, the, the, opening, the opening words of that letter. Um, and if you've read the letter, you know those are familiar words. You've heard them before. You've uh, read them before. Um, but there are some things about Ephesians that we sometimes miss. It, was, it said that you know, the, the church of Ephesus was, was one of Paul's uh, particular favorites. He had his favorite churches, uh, just as, as you might have a favorite church. Um, hopefully it's this one. Um, but uh, he had, had some favorites, and he uh, would send these letters out to them. Um, but the book of Ephesians, or the letter to the Ephesians, is just a little bit different than some of the other letters, like the ones the Philippians and the Corinthians and um, Thessalonica, the Thessalonians and, and all the other letters. And uh, there are some questions about Ephesians. Uh, the first question is, did Paul actually write this letter? Because while it um, seems to come from him, and while the thinking is, is very similar to, to Paul's thinking, the theology is very similar, when you look at the grammar of it, and you can kind of maybe tell by the, that opening part, it's a, it's a, long, um, it's a, it's a long blessing, uh, the grammar is just a little bit different than what Paul usually uses. And so was it a letter that was really written by Paul, or was it written, was it a Pauline letter, a Paul-like letter uh, that was shared with, with Ephesus? Um, the other question is, um, some of the other books specifically mention a particular congregation, that this is to the people of this church or this area, where this letter doesn't do that. And so was this letter written to a particular congregation or was it written to be passed around um, to a number of different churches? Uh, so like a cyclical uh, letter of some sort. Um, so again, some questions about the, the source and why and uh, what its purpose was. Um, but whether we look at it as, um, well, we may, we may not know the answers to that question, and while we um, can look at this as a series as we look at the book of Ephesians, um, we can also look at this as individual sermons, so that if you miss one, um, you're not going to miss too much. But I, I recommend you being here for all of them, of course, but if you, if you do have to miss one or two, um, you won't miss a whole lot. You'll be able to pick up and follow where we are. Um, but regardless of, of what we say about this letter, and whether it's a... Uh, a letter that we can do a, a complete series on or a partial series or, or whatever. Um, the one thing that we can say about this letter is that it has deep grounding into the nature of what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. There's a lot of good, solid information in this of how we are to live our lives every day. And so um, if we want to be disciples and if we want to help others find their way into that relationship with Christ too, um, we find out that this letter will, will be a good letter for us to look at. And if we can live it out, if we can live as Paul, or the author, calls us to live, uh, we'll be geared up for life, um, our Christian life of faith. So let's take a look at this first section. As we begin, um, I don't often ask you to do this, but if you have your Bible, or if there's a pew Bible there in front of you, I would encourage you to open it to uh, Ephesians chapter 1. I won't give you a page number because... Uh, because of some of the few Bibles even are different pages, but it's, um, you know, it's, it's the Gospels, then it's um, Acts and Romans and 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 
Corinthians, Galatians, then Ephesians. And so you'll find it you know, in that section. And if you find the first chapter um, and look at that third verse in particular, you'll find that there is a word, the word blessed is in that third verse three different ways. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. So it's a verb and a noun, um, and it's there three different ways uh, in that first verse. So what I'd like you to do is um, just skim through that um, fairly quickly, but count the number of blessings that you see or read um, as you look through it. Again, not just the third verse, but the whole section. How many blessings are in that whole section? Anybody have a number? Oh, I'm going to give you a hint. There's not a right or a wrong answer, so don't be afraid to. Uh... Anybody? How? Five. Five, okay. Anybody else? Three, Three? okay. Anybody else? Seven. Seven, okay. Anybody else before we go on? Okay, so actually, um, there are, um, you may have found three, you may have found five, you may have found seven, you may have found between 20 and 28. Um, it all depends on how you interpret what you're reading there. Some of them are, are um, some of them are, are smaller blessings, some of them are kind of layered blessings, and uh, they're, they're, so it depends on how you read it, um, but basically there are, there are five big ones that are there, um, and then there are all the other ones that are in between. And you know, the reason I asked you to do that is to get the idea that you know, so many times we, we do see big blessings and we know big blessings in our life, and uh, sometimes it's easy to see the blessings, but then other times there are blessings that we either take for granted or we don't maybe not perceive them as blessings, um, and, and so we, we might miss them. And some of those 20 to 28 are the smaller ones. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's kind of an a, a, um, example of how we even see and deal with the blessings that are in our lives. So the five big ones um, that you may have seen, God chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world. Uh, verse 4. Verse 5, God destined us for adoption as his children. Verse 7, in Jesus we have redemption through his blood. In Jesus, in verse 7, we have the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace. In Christ, we have obtained an inheritance, in verse 11. And then in verse 13, um, and this is actually six blessings, in him you also were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. So again, you know, it, it depends on how you count them, how you read them, how you understand them. Um, and, and all that is to say that sometimes it's hard to realize that we're blessed. Um, particularly, you know, again, through this past year and a half, uh, it was so easy to focus on the negative things that we, we heard and saw um, about the, the coronavirus, about the politics that are going on um, in our own country, but around the world. Um, all the things that, that, you know, natural disasters that, that have come, and you know, just when you think, you know, what else can happen, you turn on the news and there's something else that, that's happened. Um, built, you know, buildings collapse, and, and so in the midst of all that, it's sometimes hard to see and know the blessings that we have. And so it takes practice and a life of faith to look at the blessings that we have and to, to the discipline to actually see them as blessings and to understand the blessings we have. So what are blessings and how do we get geared up for life and, and what does it have to do with hope, which is the title of the message? Well, 
in the Hebrew scriptures, the Old Testament, when you heard about blessings, it usually had to do with life, land, and children. Um, that was the early understanding of blessings. It was always, you know, you will get this land, the, the land of promise, the land that flows with milk and honey. You will be my people. Um, you will have you know, descendants that outnumber the stars. Um, you'll live a long life. You'll, you'll be blessed. And, and uh, you know, if you look at the book of Job, God blessed Job after all of those horrifying things that he went through, losing his, his family, losing his, his property, living, losing his wealth. It says that at the end, at the end of the uh, letter, or the, the book, rather, of Job, not the letter, the, the book of Job, the Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning, and he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 donkeys. Now, that may not sound like a blessing if you've got to take care of all those animals, but um, that was a blessing. That was, that was a, a restoration um, for Job, and God blessed him with that. And then he had also seven, more, uh, seven sons and three daughters, and in all the land it says there were no women as beautiful as Job's daughters. Again, maybe that's not a blessing. If you have beautiful daughters, you might say, you know, if you worry about them and everything. But for Job, it was because it was not only was it property, not only was it wealth, but it was also his family would continue in his children. And so that was a blessing. That was eternal life. Um, and Job lived for another 140 years and he died old and full of days, it says. Um, Aaron, uh, Moses helper Aaron, uh, blessed the people um, with the blessing that uh, is familiar to us, probably the most, one of the most famous biblical blessings. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Um, again, that peace is that well-being of having everything that you need, having you know, a good life. But in the New Testament, it kind of shifts. Um, blessings change to become related to spiritual things. It's not so much tied to life and property and and, and children, uh, but it's a spiritual blessing. Remember the Beatitudes, blessed are the poor in spirit, you know, the meek, um, and, and so forth. You can go through that list in Matthew 5. And, and all those blessings, those Beatitudes, are blessings that are spiritual blessings. Um, and then certainly the blessings uh, that, that we get um, when we read the, the passage today, the text that, that we have, those blessings that you read and the ones, the five or six big ones, are spiritual blessings. Um, it's that we've been redeemed, we've been forgiven, um, we, we have new life and, and hope in Jesus Christ. We have the Spirit um, who, who lives in us. And so these are the blessings that, that we get. Certainly, whether we receive material blessings or spiritual blessings, in those blessings we find hope. You know, when you see God's hand at work in your life, when you understand that the good things that we experience come from God, that offers hope for the future. And so we set our hope, we count our blessings, we look forward to ways in which God will enrich and fill our lives with good things. And that gives us hope that God will carry us through. The other part of blessings, though, there's another, another aspect of blessings that we have to look at. And those blessings, as I kind of shared with the children this morning, um, have to do with how we bless others, what we do for others. Um, we bless people. We're called as God's people to be those who bestow God's blessings on others. Um, our job, appears as, as it appears in these verses, is not to draw lines of exclusion, but rather to open our arms wide with grace-filled faith and to welcome, to bless, and to adopt into our family, the family of faith, all the sons and daughters of God. It says that this is the purpose of him who accomplishes all things, and therefore our purpose as well. We who have been adopted into the family of God are now the adopters. God has welcomed us and given us grace, and so we go into the world to welcome others and extend grace to others so that they would know the love of God, the grace of God, the forgiveness of God. We who have been blessed with all the things that we have are now the ones who can bless others. The circle enlarges. We have been included, we are now the includers and we bless others, and our lives are blessings in action. Now, all this kind of says, okay, well, this, this makes sense. But we have to live lives that realize that, that we're blessed. Because if we don't focus on our blessings, we kind of miss out on, on some of it. So, you know, Scripture tells us some things about people who are blessed. 
Um, the first thing it says that people who are blessed do not curse. See James 3, 9 through 10. Um, people who are blessed don't listen to complainers and naysayers. Uh, take a look at Psalm 1. People who are blessed do not feel entitled, but rather feel grateful. It's not that I deserve this, but, but God has given me these things, and so it's a, a gift of God's grace. People who are blessed tend to pay their blessings forward. In other words, they're generous. If we've been blessed and realize that we're blessed and understand that what we have, we then are willing to share it with others. People who are blessed are vividly aware of their blessedness and are humbled by it. It's not, look what I did, but rather it's just who we are. It's a nature of, of, of giving, of generosity to others. People who are blessed see the sacred and holy in every aspect of their lives. They realize that God touches every part of life, that God is involved in every part of life. And when we do all of that for the praise of his glory, or in other words, to give glory to God, when we, when we bless others so that God receives the glory for it, that's who we're called to be. And when we realize our, that we're blessed, when we focus on those blessings, our lives naturally open up to others. It's kind of a natural thing. And so we have to be intent upon looking at blessings and seeing God's blessing. But then when we do that, that's when our lives then kind of just naturally open. It spills over into who we are, into what we do. People who, who share God's blessing with others. Paul says that all of this is the result of the choice that we made in setting our hope in Christ. And it's not a, a, a thin kind of hope where we kind of cross our fingers and close our eyes and roll, I hope it happens, I hope it happens, I hope it happens. No, this hope that we have in Christ is the driving force of, of who we are. That Christ gives us hope, Christ enriches our lives with blessings, and it's a purpose behind our living. It moves us from despair into joy. It moves us uh, out of self into relationship with other people so that we can be in relationship to bless others. We look for people that we can bless. It moves us out of the church. We gather for worship, but it does, we don't stay here realizing that this hope we have in Christ pushes us into the world so we can share that hope with others. The mission team is, is gathering uh, shortly and will be meeting over the next several, several, in the next several weeks. If you've ever been on a mission trip, if you've ever experienced being involved in a local mission, uh, reaching out and helping someone, uh, you know what that's like. You, you know that it's, it's that blessing, it's just who you are. You don't stop and think, okay, so God did this for me and God did this for me and God did this for me, so now, okay, I have to do this, this, and this. It, it's not like that. It's just that outpouring of, you know, God has blessed us, and so we want to reach out and share that hope with others. And so we set our hope on Christ. Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing so that we can be a blessing to others. So let's live that hope each day and bless others in any way that we can. Thanks be to God for the gift of his blessings. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you that you enrich our lives in so many ways. Again, we, we take so many of those things for granted. We don't always see them as blessings, and yet we know that all that we have comes from you. And so we are grateful. Help us to understand that we have been blessed physically and spiritually and through the hope that we have in your son, Jesus Christ. And so as your people now, help us to go and live that. Help us to share that good news with others in whatever ways we can. And help it to just flow from, from who you've called us to be. It would be people who bless others in ways that we can't even see or imagine. Again, we thank you for this letter to Ephesus that speaks to us down through the years. And so just as those who read it so many years ago found hope and meaning, help us to do the same. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So our hymn of commitment this morning is uh, one that kind of reminds us of, of how we have to intentionally look for the blessings of God. It's an old hymn. Uh, it's not in the Methodist hymnal. It's not in the, uh, the um, hymns for the family of God. It's actually in... Uh, our old blue uh, crowning glory hymnal. We used this uh, the other week. Um, so I don't have a page number for you because you don't have the hymnal, but it's count your blessings. Um, the words will be on the screen. We invite you to stand as we sing together.
two quick announcements this morning before uh, we leave. First, uh, read your bulletin. There are announcements in there, but uh, don't forget, Bible school this week uh, starts tomorrow night. And um, the mission uh, week will start the following week. And so for the mission team, those are going to be uh, volunteering and helping and serving uh, that week. Uh, we'll meet next Sunday night at 630 um, at before we uh, to kind of organize for the, for the week ahead. So now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you peace. Amen. Amen.